Yo, what's up, peeps? Check it out. So, tonight we're going to be looking at one of my favorite guitars. This is an acoustic guitar by the company Framus. It is not a company that we hear a lot about, right? Framus. Who has heard of Framus? It's not common at all. As you can see, the frames decal is a little worn off, but it is a company, and at one time in the past, about 60 years ago, Framus guitars used to be extremely popular. I'm talking like popular. So let's take a look at it like this. When we think of guitars, we often think of either the American guitars, like Gibson or Martin, some people think of Taylor, or we think of the Asian guitars, Yamaha, Alvarez, Takamini, right? Those are the names. So now Epiphone, it's one of the American companies that we think about, but it's under the Gibson umbrella now. So when I say Gibson, I mean Gibson Epiphone. So sort of similar to Sigma, which is like Sigma Martin. So the thing of it is, is that there are also European guitar companies and they often go unnoticed and untalked about a lot in the mainstream. Although in music circles, they're very popular. Now, I showed you my Hofner 491, one of my favorite guitars in the universe. I think it's here. It's right there, right? Okay. So, Hofner, a German, a European company. Framus is the same. A Bavarian company, West German, started in the 40s as violin makers and an incredible history. And what I decided to do is do an entire episode just about the histories of all the different guitar companies, at least the ones that have exciting histories, because Hofner and Framus have incredibly exciting, adventurous histories in terms of being around during the wars and being POWs and all sorts of crazy things. The same thing can be said about Epiphone and, and Gibson. That's a whole episode, too. So, Framus starts off in one part of Germany as violin makers. Now, one of the reasons why that's important is because one of the things that guitar players love about Framus guitars, and there's a lot of things, but one of the things is the violin arched backs of Framus guitars. So if you take a look at this, see, some people like it, some people don't. You see that? That is just incredible. That is beautiful. That is a violin arched back, right? Something you'd see on a violin or a cello. And Framus took that technology, and it's not really a technology, is it? It's more like they took that craftsmanship and they applied it two guitars and they applied it to both acoustic guitars and electric guitars but what we're going to be talking about today is one of the most beloved and famed acoustic guitars there is which is the Framus Texan. Now this one is from 1966, a rare model indeed. I love this guitar. Absolutely love it for so many reasons. Um, now, I do want to point out, before I get too far ahead of myself, there's also Hagstrom and Levin from Sweden, and those are also very important European guitars to name. And there's also Echo from Italy, which is also very important to name. And so let's just close that piece of it off with saying that European guitars don't get talked about a lot 
in the discussions because everybody's always focused on either the American or the Asian guitars. But if you start to explore the European guitar makers, you will not be unsatisfied. They make some killer instruments, especially if you hunt down the ones between the 40s to the 70s. That's, that's where it's at. So check this thing out just for a second, right? go on and on. I played you a piece um, a week ago called Sunset in Reykjavik and this song is, is a song that I wrote on the frame is called Sunrise Over Mars and this guitar is, is the type of instrument where if I pick up this guitar I'm going to start writing songs. It just inspires the hell out of me. So let's take a look at the guitar for a second. It's a fascinating instrument. One of the things that makes Framus guitars so cool, Jimmy Page used to love playing his Framus guitar, right? Because it looked so cool. The Beatles used to share a Framus hootenanny and it just always stuck around in the studio and they'd trade it back and forth between their different houses. Someone would always bring it to the studio. They wrote a ton of songs on it. The thing about the Frames guitars is they're more like works of art rather than just guitars. You know how some guitars are just really plain and functional, almost like tools, right? Whereas with Framus, they're almost like sports cars. I mean, you can see the bridge on this thing. By the way, that's a rosewood bridge. You can see the bridge alone, mustache bridge, is ridiculously artistic looking. The tobacco sunburst finish, just ridiculous. This incredible thick pit guard. Some guys would think this is very ugly. I think it's beautiful. The beautiful rosette around the sound hole. Now this guitar, I have researched and researched it, claims to be made out of spruce, spruce, spruce. Spruce top, which is totally normal, and spruce sides and an arched spruce back. It's the only guitar I've ever heard of that claims to be made out of all spruce except for the neck, which they claim is made out of maple. Very strange. Now, if you look at the headstock, that's another thing about Framus guitars. The headstocks are huge. And I have a suspicion that Framus and Harmony, an American company we're going to get to. In fact, I think we have a Harmony guitar here. Okay, look. There's a Harmony Sovereign right there. One of the greatest guitars in the history of the world. You see that headstock? It's gigantic. I think that in the 60s and 70s, I think Framus and Harmony were in a competition to see who could come out with the biggest headstocks. Because this thing and that thing, they look more like they could be oars for boats or like tennis rackets. They're huge. Um, it also has this interesting string glide, which is something you see show up on electric guitars later. This is enormously helpful for guitars and for strings. Now, it has a metal nut, which is very interesting because now, in 2021, people are starting to talk about the benefits of using metal nuts, primarily brass. But 
this thing is like 65 years old. It has a metal nut. Now, it also has a zero fret, meaning it has an additional fret to the first fret right after the nut. And there are pluses and minuses to that, but a lot of companies back then had a zero fret. Very interesting. The fretboard supposedly is made out of rosewood, same as the bridge. The guitar is supposed to be their dreadnought. So this is what I think as somebody who's really studied German guitars obsessively. Framus calls this their dreadnought. The frame is Texan. And, you know, a lot of players have a Framus Texan. Like I said, it's a beloved guitar. But then Framus also has what's called the Framus Jumbo. I don't find the Framus Jumbo to be a jumbo size. I think the Framus Jumbo is more like their dreadnought and the Framus Texan, which is supposed to be a dreadnought, I think is more like their grand auditorium or their orchestral model. But again, European company, totally different, right? Different vibes coming out of different regions of the world at the same time. A lot of cool cats love their Framus guitars. In fact, the very first professional photo shoot of David Bowie, he's posing with the Framus guitar. So these guitars are definitely classics. And like I said, they're almost more like sports cars rather than just tools, right? The sound of the guitar, huh. I, I want to be really honest and realistic whenever I talk to you guys about the guitars in terms of my collection, the guitars that I love, the guitars that I use, because there's a lot of music stores that do YouTube videos about guitars, right? And they'll be talking about a $110 guitar or a $3,000 guitar. And they're always saying, oh, listen to that tone. It's got great tone. It's got easy playability. And it doesn't matter what they're talking about. They say that about every single guitar. <laughs> so it's like, after a while, you're like, okay, guys, you know, you got to go somewhere else to get an honest opinion about a guitar. Um, I'm going to play it a little bit, and I'm going to talk to you about what I like and what I dislike. A lot of beef, right? Yeah, I'm probably clipping the hell out of the microphone, but as you can hear, the guitar has a lot of beef, a lot of bass, and not even bass as much as low mids because of this violin arched back, right? That basically acts as like a sound projectile. I love them myself. Um, a lot of jumbo guitars have them, Guild has them, and 
I'm a sucker for an arched back. I mean, I just love them myself. Now, the thing about arched backs, you got to remember, is that guys are always arguing with each other whether the back of their guitar is solid wood or not. If the back of your guitar is arched, it is not solid wood. That's really what it comes down to. It's laminated. And you know what? You really shouldn't care. It doesn't matter. What matters is if you like the sound of the guitar. That's what matters. It's so weird, but it's one of those things. There's all these things that guitarists will argue about. And they're like, they're theoretical. What it really comes down to is are you making transcendent music on your guitar? Are you getting off? Are you enjoying it? Are you inspiring and entertaining others with your guitar? If the answer is yes, then it doesn't matter whether it's solid or laminate. It doesn't matter what country it was made in. Not, none of it really matters. It just matters if you're digging it and if other people are digging it. Really? Right? Okay, so with this guitar, what you're noticing is even though we're getting some really deep, like punchy low mids and bass out of it, we're even getting a little bit of mids. We're not really getting any clarity of highs at all, are we? I mean, we're just not. That guitar delivers right it delivers it's just like boom okay so what you're probably gonna be noticing and thinking to yourself is hey that's a really cool groovy unique sound but it's not full spectrum enough it's not generic enough to serve as my full-time acoustic guitar for like recording or for gigs. And you know what? You're right, it's not. It's just, it's not. Because the problem is, I mean, I have it tuned to an open A, which I think serves the guitar the best, right? That's the sweet spot for this guitar. This guitar is like serving it up like a bad boy. But, if I tuned it regular and I started playing various songs, we would all be like, kind of like, uh, uh. we would miss the full spec spectrum, right? We would miss the all the other frequencies that we're not hearing that we would be hearing if we were playing a different guitar. And that's what it comes down to. So this can't be your all around, you know, playing every song gig guitar. But what it can be is a great addition to your collection and to your arsenal for recording and for inspiration for songwriting. Thing is a bad boy right now. I got that uh, thing in my head that I was just doing, doing that, right? <laughs> thing of it is, is that's what you're looking for anyway, right? If you're a singer-songwriter. Um, if you're a player, you've got to have like a full arsenal of guitars. So even if you're just a player, you still could benefit from something like this because you're making a certain record and you want a certain dark, 
sound, something mysterious, something super moody, something super vibey, and you pull this thing out and everybody's like, dude, that's the guitar, right? You guys like write your big top 40 hit, you're probably not going to want to record it with this guitar. You're going to want to use something, you know, I mean, there's a million other guitars that you could use. Something that has, you know, a very wide variety of frequencies that you can hear and more note clarity. And this doesn't, this has a lot of overtones, but that's what I love about the guitar is those overtones. In other words, you're hearing those harmonics on the top and you're not even sure which notes am I playing and which notes are harmonic overtones that the woods are creating. And you get lost inside of it. I mean, that's one of the things that makes this bad boy such a, such a beast. Basically, the rundown with the frame is Texan from 1966. All right, I'm just going to take us out jamming on this new riff I was playing. If I mess up, I mess up. But uh, hey, thanks for joining us. I'm going to see you guys again. I'm going to do another episode real soon with a different favorite guitar. Just badass.